All right. So uh, the agenda for the session is how to excel in an interview, be it any B school interview or uh, future interviews for your placements or any kind of job interviews as well. You will find this set of topics to be um, quite similar. So these are quick fundamental pointers that I thought uh, would be required for you guys to um, keep in mind for the next maybe uh, three weeks or so um, before you actually start your uh, the you know the D day for your Excel BM interview or HR interview or maybe the upcoming uh, IFT MDI whatever interviews that you have right. So the first thing that you should be considering yourself is keep yourself as a product, right? Consider yourself as a product and then trying to present yourself in terms of your USPs, talk about your values. You might have values like resilience, integrity, uh, you know, commitment, hardworking, learnability. Um, you have a, you're a quick problem solver. You're a quick learner, right? So talk about the product. So see yourself from a third person's eye, you know, and make the product features, list down the product features. So if I have to say, um, maybe Sreshta is a product, right? Don't take me otherwise, but let me, let me just uh, focus on the, um, sorry, my slides is behaving unnatural today. So uh, let me try to see Sreshta as a product. And I would try to understand what are the features that Sreshta as a product is having, right? I would note it down. So there's an exercise for yourself. So note down, so if Shine is a product, so what features do Shine have, right? The commitment, you know, what commitment? How do I say that Shine has commitment? How do I say that Shine holds integrity in his values? So there has to be some backing with examples, with situations, could be from your professional life, could be from your personal life, could be from any, your life as a whole, right? So whenever you're trying to present the USPs, Keep a backup logic, a story along with you. It should not be key, main resilient ho. But kaise, wo bhi ab, wo story ab thoda bana lo, apne hisab se. And that is exactly what the Excel panelist or the uh, B school panelist will look at. They are your professors, they are your industry experts. They have tons of experience under their belt and they can understand who is bluffing, who is not, and who is talking genuine. Right. So just try to explain your values with some example, some situation from your life. The second point is awareness. And you should be going to L5 of your resume or your SOP. Now Excel wanted SOP. Some colleges may want your resume, your CV, whatever you call. Just go to L5, which means the level five of your resume points or SOP points. It should not be that you've just mentioned it just for the sake of SOP, just for the sake of writing to 50 words of statement of purpose. You should be going deeper till level five. Mostly they would cover till level three, but to be on the safer side, go to level five of your points. Let's say if I've mentioned, now I come from a you know banking sector and financial sector. And let's say I say that I have headed a branch of a 2 billion um, uh, category branch and have increased the category of, of the branch by maybe 15% or maybe 30%. Now, how did I do that? Go to that level as well. Okay, so I have increased the CASA base of my branch. CASA means current account and savings account. Uh, and how did I do that? With strategic partnerships with government schools and institutions and uh, NGOs, as well as uh, uh, government organizations as well. So this is the, level third level till which I reached to understand or help the panelists understand this is the reason why, or this is how this is the approach that I've adopted to increase the revenue of the branch or increase the CASA base of the branch. Right? Your driving factors, what defines you as an individual? Maybe Ashwin Ganesh is there on the, on the call. So maybe if I ask Ashwin, what are your driving factors? So you should be coming up with some examples or some uh, catchphrases of the factors that defines Ashwin and not Gopal and not Aditya and not Shayan. You shouldn't be giving some Google answers. The panelist wants to know you. And typically in Excel, 
uh, you would find people or you find uh, the panelists, the professors, they love engaging into conversations. They really love conversations and they really love to understand you as a person and not any, uh, you know, Googled or any generic answer, right? If I search, uh, you know, uh, tell me something about you on Google, it will give me tons of good, um, well-written, well-grammarly, uh, uh, verified items. And if you say that, there are n number of other people who is also uh, saying those answers, but that will not help. Be original with your answers. They want to know you as a person, right? Also your extrinsic and intrinsic motivation, what self-driving factors you have within yourself and how do you take inspiration from others in the outside world? Do you take inspiration from books? Do you take inspiration from authors? Do you take inspiration from leaders, any business tycoon, any entrepreneur, any uh, philanthropist? What is your motivating factors that you derive from people outside or maybe things outside? It could be anything, people, things, animal, anything under the sun. But try to back it up with some examples again, some situation, some exam life examples. Identify generic and specific questions. Now, if I ask you, tell me something about yourself. Now, maybe just anyone, can anyone just take up uh, that question and can you tell me, is it a generic question or is it a specific question? Quickly, can someone unmute and quickly say that? Is it a generic or a specific question? A so specific it's question. It's a generic specific question, question, right? It's a specific question. Who was that? Yeah, I'm Divya. Yeah. Divya, you're, you're saying that it's a specific question. Yes. Okay, who else is uh, saying that it's a specific question? Uh, me, Vibhuti. Vibhuti, okay. Vibhuti and, uh, sorry, who was the other one? I, I forgot. Divya. Divya. Yeah. yeah, so you're saying that it's a specific question. Why do you think this is a specific question, Divya and uh, Vibhuti? Uh, I think it's a specific question because they want to know about ourselves, specifically about our personality. Uh, the yes, interview is only about you, right? And they would ask you, they would not ask about uh, Vivuti to Divya, and they would not ask otherwise, right? No, no. Uh, the point is like uh, this question is uh, specific to the interviewee. Like, we have to be specific about ourselves. That's why, like I said, it's a specific question. See, Vivuti and Divya, just try to understand. I'm sure that there were other people who also um, enamor your thoughts as well. But try to understand this, that the interview is between you and the panelists, right? So all the conversation that would be having, you would be having it for the next, you know, 20, 30 minutes during that duration would be based on you mostly and a bit about the interviewer. So when someone is asking, tell me something about yourself, this is a generic question. In the sense, they want to know you as a person and they are not fixing any boundary to that question. So tell me something about your question opens a horizon of answering the question. Vis-a-vis, -vis, I say that, what is the distance between earth and sun? Is this a specific question or is this a generic question? Now this becomes a specific question. So these are factual answer. Not all factual answers are, uh, you know, not all uh, specific questions are factual, but to try to get the drill of it. When they are asking specific question, they want you to answer a specific set. They're expecting something from you, which is specific in nature. Vis-a-vis, -vis, when they're asking, tell me something about yourself, they're not giving any boundary. You're limitless in that answer. So you can mention anything under the sun about your life, about you as a person to them. Am I making sense over here? Mm, yes, sir. Yes, got so it. Generic and specific yeah. question, how do you identify? You identify it based on the answer that you're going to give. So if the question is, tell me something about yourself, this is a generic question. If the question is, let's say, why should we hire you, Divya? They want you some specific answers, Divya. They want you to showcase your skills or maybe display your qualities over there. At that point of time, you will not say, uh, 
I come from this family. I come from. I am brought and brought up in Calcutta. I am. You will not say that, right? You will not give them all those answers. But you will say, okay, this is the set of reasons why you think that you should be hired or you should be uh, selected for this B school. Now, do you understand the difference between specific and generic questions? Now, the next time when you hear a generic question, you can safely dedicate some forty-five to sixty seconds of your time to answer that question. So, usually, the luxury of time in answering a generic question is more than specific question so if i ask you a specific question i would expect to the point answers crisp and short compact so next time you hear a generic question and a specific question you are able to differentiate between the two answers that they are expecting and you also differentiating you will be able to differentiate the time within which you should be answering that question am i clear on this guys chat box Yes. No. Yes. No. Yes, sir. Good. More yeses, please. I can see thirty-three people. Yes. No. Jo bhi hai. Chat box mein dal do, so that we can move ahead. So I have one question. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Uh, who, who is this? Sorry. Who is this? I'm. I'm Shanae. Can I? Uh, can we just do one thing? Can you park the question uh, for the uh, Q and A session? We'll we'll yeah, have a no Q and A session. Yeah. Just just note down your question. And we'll uh, take it up. Yes. All right. The next thing, the third thing, which is really important, is your build a storyline. I do not, as a panelist, as an interviewer, I am being taking interviews. I've been conducting interviews throughout the day. I'm bored with answers. I want some novel storyline. i do not want to be bored with google answers please that is the mindset that a interviewer usually keeps when you are when he is sitting in that chair right and build a story line whatever whatever story line that you have i'm sure that everyone has a lot of tons of story line you might think that this is silly at the moment but build that story line create a you know if you have a climax around it build that climax this is just like a movie right so just try to build a story line marry numbers with narratives you do not want to give only qualitative data qualitative information back it up with some quantifiable figures some key figures if i ask you what is your achievement in life maybe you are coming up with some qualitative answer like i have this and this and that and that in life but can you back it up with some numbers let's say i come from a, i'll keep it, giving examples from my background so if i say that i have headed the branch and i have successfully headed headed a, a branch in in maybe in a metropolitan city but i do not give any substantial number to back it up would it really make any sense successful how do you say that it is successful so okay shahan you have run a branch you have you have run a 2 billion branch how do you say that you have made it successful in your tenure of maybe 2 years or 3 years so i would say that i have made the revenue of the branch or i have increased the revenue of the branch maybe by 30% during my tenure of 2 years i have increased the casa base by 15% i have increased the non interest income of my branch by 10% i have added n number of or xyz uh, number of um, you know uh, credit loan accounts in my branch and this is the set of parameters due to which i think that i have exceeded the expectations of my zone and my branch and i see myself as a successful branch head now does this make sense guys use a chat box and tell me just if you have got the point so i really want you guys to back your story with some numbers because we are always inclined to hear numbers we are comfortable with numbers we are comfortable with graphs so visually we are a lot of comfortable so when you take a number when you throw a number i will visualize that number in my mind so if i say that i increase a branch Casa by forty five percent. So instantaneously, I will visualize that number forty five percent in my mind, and that makes a lot of impact in your answer. Right? Then talk about your culture. Now, usually, if you uh, look at any person or any personality, you will find three different dimensions of culture. One is your capital culture. 
what is capital culture capital culture you know macro economic factors like let's say macro economic factors for us is india right so how is indian culture defining you what are the culture that you know india and uh, you know what the diverse culture that india has how is it defining you as a person that is something that you should be focusing on the next thing is your clan culture clan c l a n clan which is your micro community let's say someone is a marwari or let's say someone is a bengali or someone is a rajasthan how is that rajasthani culture building you or influencing your character your personality your attitude and the third is your family culture so you have you must, everyone has a family culture everyone has a history of their fathers grandmother grandfather great grandfather maybe let's say your great grandfather was uh, you know uh, was someone from the british era and he served the british uh, uh, company or maybe the british government or maybe your grandfather has uh, you know uh, been a uh, fighter in the uh, independence struggle indian independence struggle so there will be something in your family that that culture is influencing you so try to understand that because this is what makes you as a person otherwise sub same platform pe hi hai what extra do you bring bring as novelty is what they are expecting from you now my grandfather coincidentally was from the army background now i talked about the discipline that is inculcated in my family in my mother in my father and that is something that has you know uh, uh, drawn down to me as well so this is where you bring up your one usp that you are a disciplined person and how this discipline came what is the origin of the discipline is your family culture so to repeat what are the different dimensions of personality one is your macro which is the capital culture there is your micro which is a clan culture third is your family culture does that make sense please can i get a yes or no in the chat box uh, uh sir i have a doubt like uh, yeah can can said, we please uh, park it can we please park it for the okay. given a session okay. because i really wanted to uh, okay. since you lost 15 minutes initially we just wanted to finish it up and then we can move on okay sir Next. next is the structured thinking which is a step by step approach now what is structured thinking structured thinking follows a four step approach now for me it is a four step approach and usually it encompasses uh, the the idea that uh, structured thinkers have one is hypothesis second step is findings third step is conclusion and the fourth step is recommendation i repeat hypothesis findings conclusion recommendation now let's say there is a problem statement in front of you and the problem statement is can you judge or can you say whether shyam ghosh is a good academic person or not this is a problem statement in front of you now at the very beginning what are the set of questions or hypothesis that you will build can anyone just quickly uh, unmute and give me a quick glance no one is judging you over here unmute and just give me a quick understanding how will you approach this problem uh yeah maybe uh, if, if if it's concerning academics maybe i look into your uh, grades as such in the beginning you will look into my grades good what else Uh, not just grades, but uh, on, on top of that, I would ask uh, questions related to uh, you know to test your actual learning. I mean, grasping power as such. Correct. What else? So essentially, what you are doing, you are trying to find out. You are trying to dig into the problem, right? And here, the first thing that you should be doing is. simultaneously when you are finding the you know you are trying to question me you will also make a hypothesis around it now let's say i say that okay my cgpa is 4.5 out of 
Now, are you in a position? Uh, was it Anudeep who answered the question? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So now the question is to you, Anudeep. Now I say that I have achieved or I've scored 4.5 CGP out of 10. Now, what is your next step? What do you say? Yeah, I mean, based on what I can see, I would not uh, have a strong opinion of... Uh, so you would say that the, this Shayan, Shayan Ghosh is a bad student, right? Yeah. Now, what if I add an information which I didn't, which you didn't ask me? 4.5 is the highest grade in my batch. How would you react to this? Now, what did you say? Oh, I didn't ask you this. Yes. So what you did, instead of going to the finding stage and the conclusion stage, you went directly to the recommendation stage. Uh, you mean, instead of going to the finding stage, you came directly to the conclusion stage. Yeah. So in the findings, what you should have done, hey, achha, 4.5 mil hai, hai, koi baat nahi. I'll keep my conclusion for the later part. Let me ask more question. What is the average percentile or average grade CGP in the batch? I would say, okay, the average is four. Now, 5% of the people have got 4.5. So I would bring all those datas. Now you would be in a position, achha, lag raha tha 4.5 kharab hai, but actually he is the highest. Now, what could be a conclusion? He, you would say that, okay, he's a good student. Yes or no? Uh, yeah. Based on that, you would come up with some recommendation. Okay, so you have got 4.5 out of 10. That seems to be a lot of difference between the you know total marks and the uh, obtained marks. So there's a difference of 5.5. Now let's start to think about how we can improve the highest grade. So from 4.5, maybe we can try to look at 5, 5.5, 6. Now how we can try to improve on the highest grade? Is there a fundamental problem in the learning in the institution that the score of all the students is pretty low or maybe uh, on the lower side of the scale. That would be a recommendation. Okay, maybe we, let's try to think of an experiential learning. Let's try to bring in online courses or digital courses or something related to AI, ML, whatever. So you would try to recommend the set of uh, pedagogy or maybe something else that would uh, help to increase the average score of the batch and also the highest score. Now that is your recommendation. Anudeep ne ye recommendation diya hai based on the hypothesis, on the findings and the conclusions. Am I clear, guys? Again, use the chat box. And if you have any questions, please park it. I would definitely take it up at the end. Right? A bit of more answers would be good. Cool. The next step or the next point is MBA is not a course. It's a, it's a way of thinking. It's a perspective building exercise for two years. So what MBA gives you is the gateway of opportunities, the gateway of learning, and you learn how to learn in the two years of MBA. What did I say? You learn how to learn in the two years of MBA. Because there will be too many things at your place and on your plate. And the too many things. In the first semester, you will have six subjects, six heavy subjects. In the second semester, you'll have eight heavy subjects. So you would be differently uh, challenged with the subjects, the concepts, the level of difficulty, the exams, the type of exam, the scheme of exams, and not exams would be MCQ. You would find different type of things uh, you know, different tricks in a uh, MCQ, the exam pattern would differently change. You would never see this kind of exam pattern in an MBA course. So these are the set of things that you would be challenged with and you would approach the problems with your own set of thinking, with your own set of, um, you know, tools and techniques with the help of the peers and it will completely change your perspective to handle a problem, to handle new things, and to have a vision in the future. So essentially, it gives you a quick crash course of life in two years. 
and definitely b school is not a placement agency it's a make of business learnings it's an educational institution so whoever thinks that uh, they should mention placements as one of the points of why choosing an excel or to the question why excel and why mba at excel please do not mention placement you can briefly touch upon it just you know feather touch but move to the bigger aspect of the uh, you know b school journey which is your learnings peer to peer life projects internships business uh, case solving just mention all these things am i clear guys good fair enough now let me quickly move to the next slide which i've tried to uh, list down couple of main parameters which the interview uh, interviewer would actually look at um, from a candidate is your confidence how beautifully you place your thoughts are you able to articulate your thoughts are you able to substantiate your answer with confidence if i ask you are you sure about your answer you should be 100% sure about it if you're not you should be 100% sure that i am not sure about the answer so you can definitely confess or definitely say that no i'm not sure about this answer but this is the this is a set of things that i uh, think would uh, you know would, would be the answer so be conscious about your be confident about your answer also be confident of the answers which you do not know and that's up to absolutely fine if you do not know any answer you're not a super person or superman or superwoman to answer everything it's fine to not answer and accept that i do not know that's also a confidence next is learnability do you have the knack of learning or do you stuck with something and you bogged down with that do you take up new challenges have you learned anything in the recent past so there was an excel sop question that have you done anything to advance your knowledge in a particular domain over the last year that shows your learnability and expect questions definitely questions from it in your uh, pi are you self driven do you have those intrinsic motivations the driving factors mention those driving factors are you able to do creative thinking do you practice creative thinking if you are faced with a surprising question or a, or a surprising situation that you are uh, you are asked to analyze are you able to think some innovative solutions novelty of your solutions the originality of your solutions are you true to yourself are you true to the answers that you are giving do you firmly believe the answers or is it just that you are passing on any random google answer or any uh, third party answers is it true to yourself and definitely there are couple of questions uh, on which they will judge you on novelty are you humble so maybe you are coming from a great background maybe you have worked at mckinsey bcg or maybe you have worked as a consultant in your uh, previous stint before coming to xlri or maybe any other b school do you understand the business if you understand the business are you humble about your approach towards business are you humble about your own self awareness humble and humble bragging these are two different things at times you can do humble bragging but again feather touch on it do not go deeper into it because this is a very sensitive issue um, you you just do not want to get into that trouble or that pit now the difference between humble and humble bragging is let me give an example so humble bragging is let's say i ask you what is your weakness and you say that i cannot say no to work i cannot say no to uh, people this is humble brag i'm a hard working guy and i you know and i uh, i cannot say no to uh, work i'm a workaholic these are humble brag you do not need to do this be humble in the in the sense if you have really a weakness just be open about it and this makes you uh, come across as a person or a candidate who is 
under, who is understanding his limitations and he's also working on it. So even the professors are not perfect. Even the professors and the candidates who are currently studying at XLRI are not perfect. Just be humble because there are a lot, a lot of, lot of business world that you are yet to see. I'm not sure uh, what is the average work experience of this, of this set of 33 people that we have. Assuming it to be around two, three years, no, there, there's a huge world that is yet to be explored for you guys. And just be humble about it. Just show yourself as someone who wants to learn a lot, who wants to do experiential learning. And that's why the MBA is the right product for you to help you to go to that position. Be comfortable with ambiguity. Are you able to put your arms around a problem which is unknown? In this VUCA world, you understand VUCA, right? Everyone understands VUCA these days. Everyone talk about VUCA these days. Are you able to quickly switch yourself and uh, make yourself comfortable with unambiguous situations, uncertain situations where there are a lot of limited resources? And how comfortable are you? All these learning, all these parameters that, that's written over here in, on the slide, they are just a minute set of the exhaustive list that is there. Whenever you're mentioning this, try to substantiate it with an example. Nothing works better than examples, to be honest. Nothing works better than story. Are you able to perform with passion? Because in B school, there were a lot of activities. You're, someday you're doing this uh, committee work. Maybe you're the placement head, placement secretary. Maybe you're the uh, head of a committee, cultural committee, Palana, Dimka, both are committees. How do you simply manage the time of the committee work as well as your academics? Do you have the passion to perform in, a, in, a, in academics and your committees? or anything uh, extra that you're doing, life projects, internships, blah, 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 anything. Do you have the passion? That is something that would be checked. Are you a good problem solver? Do you have that structured thinking? The structure that I was talking about in a couple of minutes ago. Do you have that structured thinking? Are you able to solve problems? Maybe in a lower scale, but have you been able to solve problems in your recent past or maybe in your personal life? Take out that examples. So as an interviewer, I would like to hear your examples instead of any hunky Dorian fancy problem that you have solved, which, which can be Googled anywhere. But I'm focusing this very, very much is because I want to know the candidate in person and not a Google. Are you a good communicator? The content that you have, are you able to deliver the content? Communication does not mean, mean good English. Had it been uh, you know, the criteria for good English, then the uh, BPO guys would have made it through uh, the B school because they can speak great English, much, much, much better than I can speak, or many of you can speak, or many CEOs can speak. But that's not the point. Are you able to communicate whatever you have? Are you able to articulate your thought and able to make, understand the opposite person? That is what communication is all about. Are you able to make complex learning simple enough for the other person to understand? Do you have a positive presence, an optimistic approach, an eager to learn approach? Don't start with, uh, don't start your, uh, usually the first question is telling something out of yourself or introduce yourself. Do not start with a negative connotation. That really, you know, that's not pleasing to hear in the very beginning of an interview. I have seen, I have uh, interviewed hundreds of candidates over the last couple of years and I've seen that many candidates to start with a, you know, negative competition. That's not required. Start with a positive, end with a positive outlook. You can talk about your ups and downs in your life in the middle of your story, but not right at the beginning or not right at the end, because you want to leave the first impression good. And you would want to leave the last impression as really impactful and positive.
even if you have some negative uh, you know aspects or situations in your life mention it but also mention that how you overcome that situation how you dealt with that situation what are the learnings that you have got from that situation make sure that 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 negative event or that thing shaped you come up with those points come up with those takeaways from that situation from that learning i mean from that incident am i making sense guys cool okay there's one another thing that i want you to understand is there is something called actual question and there is something called intended question now not all questions would be direct to you so there could be questions which are slightly tweaked but they're hinting at the same thing maybe they want to learn maybe they want to understand whether you have that learning knack within you they will not simply ask you ki uh, do you have a learning ability they would not ask you this straight question they might ask you okay so uh, vibhuti what you have done in the last one year to uh, gain your understanding or uh, you know uh, to advance your knowledge in a particular domain or a particular work area which they have asked in the sop they would twist the questions now let's say there a question which says the actual question is why did you leave your last company you know many of you have switched companies or worked in more than one company there could be a question why did you leave the company the previous company this is the actual question but what is the intended question behind it the intended question is why did you choose the next company over the previous company this is the intended question i'm sure that you guys are noting it down not everything i've put it on a slide otherwise it would be a uh slide bombarding but just try to understand this uh, concept actual question is pretty different from intended question don't fall into that trap don't fall into that trip pit there could be something like why should we hire you or let, let's say why should we select you gopal the, the question is for gopal why should we select you gopal you should be having an answer which says this is a value system of xlri you set five points the value system that xlri upholds you list down five value system that you as a person gopal has a person is carrying and you say that how these are complementary skills or how these are equivalent how these are these five sets over here and five sets over here is marrying the concept of value system and how you're building an ecosystem of learning culture experiential um, understanding how you build this that is what you should be answering otherwise the question simply looks like why should we select you you will say that this is these are the points that i have i'm uh, hard working i'm uh, i'm a quick learner i'm this and i'm falana dimka bata diya but that's not that looking at they are looking at how well do you synthesize the information or the value system that excel has the value system that you have how well do you marry these two concepts are you able to bring a synergy over here that is what they're looking at so that is what is the difference between actual question and an intended question i just took an example to help you understand cool is that is that fine all right the last slide that i want to leave you with um then we'll take up the q and a session just remember this it's very subtle to understand and very impactful 
the secret of being a bore is to tell everything. Can anyone just take up and you know explain their own understanding why is this line so important? Anyone, anyone just try to unmute and give me quick thoughts. Why is, is this line important? So if you say every, uh, every Think about yourself at the start, then there are questions to follow up questions. Hey, sorry, who was mm -hmm. that? Is it breaking Ashwin? Is it with me only or? They will. Uh... No, no, he's breaking. Will... Am I clear? Yeah, Ashwin, maybe you can try to, uh, try to fix your net. Maybe someone else can take up. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, yeah. I am Kaushal. Can I take this up? Yeah, sure. Okay, so the secret of being a boy is to tell everything. So I believe uh, every story uh, is not going to finish in 30 or 45 seconds. But what we can uh, attempt in every answer is we have to leave a very interesting cue so that the interviewer feels very uh, interested in our own story. So we have to tell only the major highlights that will interest him more. And if it is if he is interested, he will ask more questions on based on our. Uh, first 45 to 50 seconds of uh, monologue for that particular answer. Cool. That is one aspect. So this is not just for the first introduction question. This is for every other question. So people do say, how do you drive an interview? Right? People do ask me, uh, how to drive an interview? This is very simple to say concept, but how do you actually do it? Now my simple funda, I, I still practice it. I'm not saying that I have perfected this uh, approach, but I still pra practice and I'm a practitioner of this approach is that I leave breadcrumbs for the interview to take up, you know, uh, whoever has interacted with me uh, on a one-to-one -one basis from this uh, group. I, I always say uh, this thing to them that leave breadcrumbs. What do I mean by breadcrumbs? I mean that you leave cues for the interviewer to take up that question in the follow-up. And whenever you see that your breadcrumbs has been picked by the panelist, you're rest assured that the interview is going your way, which means that you are driving the interview. So you are sitting in a car and the steering is in your hand, not in the panelist's hand. Otherwise, if you do not give the breadcrumbs or if you do not give the panelist enough cues to ask you a question, he will ask anything under the sun. And you will be more comfortable to answer questions within your domain than answering a question which is under the sun. Am I correct? Yeah. So do not say anything at the very first go. Leave them with some unanswered questions or unanswered facts. And how do I do that? I would leave that breadcrumb in the answer. And I'm sure that everyone understands comedy. Most of us, uh, you know, uh, do watch comedy uh, sessions or comedy events. Now, what does a comedian does? He gives punchlines. And what he does next? He pauses for a moment. He pauses for two, three seconds for the audience to understand the punchline to process that punchline or process that joke within their mind and then make expressions or laugh or whatever. So they react to it. So the comedian gives some pauses, thoughtful pauses. I call it a thoughtful pause for the audience to grab the information, absorb the information, react to the information. So these are three different stages and the same applies to your interview as well. You are the comedian over here. The panelist is the audience and you're giving out information. Make thoughtful pauses for the panelists to understand the information, to process it in his mind, make some follow-up questions on it and then he will come up with his reaction with a follow-up question. And once you see that he is taking up the cues that you have intentionally left behind for him, just be rest assured that the interview is going your way. 
Does this concept make sense? Everyone? I just need more responses, guys. I mean, typical, I, I see five, six people who are uh, typically replying. Direct message, not karo, Mohit. Uh, just send it to everyone in the meeting. Right? Is this concept, are you able to re relate to this concept? It's a very interesting concept to uh, understand in an interview. Be it your B-school interview, be it your placement interview, your job interview, whatever interview. Your marriage interview as well. Right? When you're going to see your girlfriend or maybe you're in an arranged marriage, don't say everything. Leave some cues for the girl or girl's parents to take up. Right? In, in that case, the marriage will be finalized. Right? Okay. So I've taken quite a lot of time. Around 45 minutes. I intended to keep it short and uh, to wrap up everything by 30 minutes. I've just overshot by 15 minutes since we started 15 minutes late. But anyway, uh, do you have any questions, guys? I, I'm sure that most of you have a couple of questions. Just shoot one by one. Just put it in the chat box. Uh, whoever puts first in the chat box will try to, uh, will go in the chronology wise, sequentially. Just type question in the chat box. Yes, yes, mat karo. Question lik do. Q lik do, kuch bhi. Q, Q. Just write Q. I'll take it up. Just write Q. I will ask you to unmute and uh, ask your question. Okay, Kaushal has one. Okay, go ahead. Kaushal, you can unmute. Yeah, hi. Yeah, hi, this is Kaushal. I want to ask, like, uh, for Excel specific, uh, like, how do you differentiate uh, Excel over other colleges? Would you be able to answer that for us? Like, like why is Excel is better? Like, if we are given uh, point blank choices, like, let us say, IMC, P, yeah. or any other colleges, and how do you choose Excel over this, considering, like, IM is a bigger brand, if they say, like, how do we defend that? When is your interview, Kaushal? The first Excel interview? 13th. 13th. 13th uh, BM 13th and 8th uh, it's HR. Cool. So you have about 12 and uh, you're 7 days. So about 19 days you have time to figure it out. So how do you figure yeah. it out? I'll tell you. Uh, I'll help you with the process and not the answer. So just go and research about XLRI. Go and research about the recent news uh, in XLRI. What are the events that they're conducting? What is the ranking of the college? Um, uh, if you have to compare with any um, XYZ B school, try to look at the, um, the faculty and student ratio, the alumni base that they have. You can look about, uh, you can look upon the, uh, the, the Excel human resource capabilities that is there in every organization, be it any organization, you talk about any big brands, you will find an XLR right at the helm of the organization in the CXO level, in the head uh, vice president level, in the you know leadership level. Take up any, any organization. You will typically find an Excel over there. Because Excel is, and more so, you will find in the HR, um, HR roles, the composition benefit roles, the IR roles, industry relation roles, the personal management roles. So they typically hold this position and they typically prefer Excel students over uh, any other colleges, right? And the reason being Excel was initially founded as a IR company, uh, I mean, IR institution, which is personal management and industrial relations. Now you still have that Excel RI, right? Xavier Labor Relations Institute. So that was a labor instit uh, relations uh, institute in the first place. And then they moved into BM and all the other courses like other colleges did. But at the crux of it, it is a human resource, personal management. 
company and you will find tons of xlris holding places in in, in big big companies recently lena nair who who became the uh, ceo of channel poco channel if you if you know the brand uh, i think she was uh, heading uh, unilever previously there would be n number of startups in the previous just recently 2 3 years ago you will find four startups that have gone unicorn talk about it in an excel interview and the same you talk about in an imc interview i'm not telling you to focus on excel because just because i'm from excel i'm saying that if you're going for an i'm calcutta interview and you're talking about and if you're asked that why i'm calcutta over excel you talk about i'm calcutta alumni i'm calcutta uh, startups i'm calcutta unicorns but this is the process that you can apply does that answer your question kaushal yes yes definitely thank you yeah so you have some time to research on it do that research and uh, yeah i'm sure you will come up with some answers yeah yeah sure yeah okay uh meanwhile i'm just stopping the screen share okay any other questions i heard a couple of questions in the mean time okay vibhuti yeah go ahead hello sir yeah uh, so sir uh, as you are an insider you have been through your b school journey through excel so like uh, what are the few insights you can share as an exceller which can help us gain few plus points for the interview uh, this is a generic question as specific question it's up to you in which way you would like to answer. this is a very generic question so you ask me specific i, I can answer you specific question general kuch bhi bol sakta hu main excel ke bare mein but you have to you know like narrow from down your, your point of view yeah, my, my point, point i have 100 point of views so you tell me what exactly you want to uh, know about excel and do you want to know about the learnings do you want to know about the uh, teaching uh, pedagogy the, sir you uh, talked about the value system yeah mainly yeah. about the value system okay so in excel the value system is pretty much the honesty integrity um experiential learning uh giving back to the society so these are the set of things right and responsible leader you are not going to b school to become a manager right so b school for this two years uh, of mba or this management learning you are not going to become a manager at the end and that is not a vision your vision should be to be a responsible future leader and what are the qualities that a leader should have to read up on that these are the values that excel imbibes and maybe if you happen to uh, to to uh, visit the campus anytime or if you happen to get selected in this course if you be to the campus uh, if you visit the campus then you will find that this this values is definitely there with everyone in the campus be it the students be it the faculty be it the staff they were there the non non teaching staff the canteen people you will find these values systems in them as well and that what builds the excel ecosystem now you can talk about your values that you come up with try to marry it and present a story line yeah does that make sense vivuti yes sir yeah thank you cool any other questions so, uh so yeah uh, i have a question uh so how is an excel interview different or what or i think the point i'm trying to make is like what does excel eventually look for in the yeah, that, candidate that's what i, which, that's what I which, said which, i showed the second slide so there are a couple of parameters right learnability your attitude your communication skill uh, how beautifully you are delivering your thoughts are you able to articulate your thoughts are you, are your answers novel enough right original answers are you able to solve problem so these are the set of parameters that typically in any interview not just excel in any interview they would look at some interview uh, is hr heavy or uh, you know behavioral uh, questions heavy some could be your uh, education like usually i've seen that the cap interviews and cap interviews are typically your uh, uh, your your education academic related questions i've seen 
but that could be different as well for other colleges right so for excel the hr and behavioral questions could be more but having said that you cannot discount those technical questions as well but at the crux of it these are the set of parameters that they would look at your learnability your attitude are you self driven what are your motivating factors what are your driving factors do you have the passion to perform and of course you are if you are humble enough or not all right right any other questions okay uh, i see i don't know how to pronounce it if it is egya so yeah i, I just asked the question so. okay okay fine that's what any other questions guys no one has a question what is the difference between hr and bm course i was expecting that question actually and what is the difference between hr course and what is the difference between uh, bm course yeah ashwin go ahead so so one of the main questions that i had was uh, uh, with respect to any uh, when we are uh, looking into this key parameters that excel is looking for uh, are we also expecting on someone how excel will develop those qualities further so can you give any points on that like uh, any specific key, uh, like how would they will improve your creativity or novelty or will they provide some challenges like that that yeah. increases uh, your creativity or that allows you to showcase your self driven or like how you manage those situations or how you increase your learnability see self driven and, and learnability these are the set of things that you know, no b school can teach you this is uh, pretty ingrained and this happens over a a number of years and it doesn't happen in the next you know uh, 18 months or 24 months so typically these are the set of things that they would want you to have and come to a campus rest other things like time management business acumen um understanding uh, you know having a 360 value creation uh, perspective these are the set of things that excel or any other b school would um help you with but these hr parameters self driven motivating factors driving factors the passion you will not be able to develop i mean i won't say you will not be able to develop but it's less likely that you can develop it in two years there's a very um, subtle things that that takes time to develop yeah definitely you can talk about other skills other um, parameters that you want to develop in a b school maybe your presentation skills maybe your uh, presence of uh, thinking those things you can want to uh, you may want to uh, mention in in the question why mba or why mba from xlri does that answer your question ashwin uh yes i got it so uh, because i was actually thinking that uh, uh maybe we would have to on some point when we are giving our answers uh, that time we would have to touch up on how excel will develop this further but if that's not the case okay so i got no no you can definitely that's i'm not saying that you you should not mention how excel will develop you can mention other points which you want to uh, gain from an mba school or from uh, uh from excel but these are the set of things that they would evaluate you on you can say these are the set of list of uh, skills that i want to gain from an b school specifically from excel right and you list down your five points that's fine but that answer would be uh, to a different question which is why mba why excel, uh, excel mba theek hai Ashwin, is it fine? Uh, thank. You. Yes, sir. Cool. Uh, Rajat, you're next. Go ahead. Yeah. Good evening, sir. Yeah. Good evening. My question was related to the same pattern with uh, about BM and HRM roles. How we should be able to distinguish and how would be able to present ourselves for that? And another part of the question is, 
if we are asked in both of our interviews which is your preference should we be consistent with both the answers or what should we do in that scenario you have both the calls raja yes sir okay and which is your first interview hr or bm bm on 9th on 9th so what is your preference rajat you are in a bm interview right and i am the panelist yeah. i am asking you what is your preference rajat is it bm or hr my preference is business management why i had done uh, roles based on business management related to finance and workshops workshops related to those okay and why do you want to shun hr because this is a new concept that you can you can learn new area of domain yeah. yeah i'm i'm not shunning hr i would i would say that it is a slightly more preferable option for me because i had done consistent role behind it i had also been associated with hr while doing my internship at at one of my places at century leon so so here that, rajat what, comes up with a an answer that i am more you know uh, i'm more inclined towards bm roles right you may, you can talk about what are the set of um, you know skills that you have gained when you have worked as an hr or what uh, you have interned as an hr or maybe you have worked as a business management role or what are the pre mba roles that you have worked on and these are the set of skills that you have gained and you want to hone your skills over there so you can talk about having worked in in both the uh, domains as a business management as a uh, hr domain i feel my calling is in the business management because of this 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 this, this points does that make sense raja yes sir essentially it is how you structure the answer and this is specific to rajat right. only uh, other 32 people should not be following what rajat is saying right everyone should have their own unique answer but the structure is answer. important yeah yeah, yeah sir and sir if same question is asked for hrm then sir what should be See, if the panelist the is same should... if the panelist is same yeah. then you are in a fix right yes sir but if the panelist is different you know which one to replace which one to add it it happened to me last year that's why i was asking uh, so that's why i say if the panelist is same if i unfortunate enough that the panelist is same then be consistent uh, okay but make sure that you come up with some uh, optimistic answers in hr if you are in an hr interview so, and you are saying that i don't want to go into hr that's also not advisable so make sure that yes. you know you, you say that uh, having said that you know if i do not get through uh, bm then i would uh, definitely uh, be eager to learn a new domain of expertise uh, maybe new domain of learning and maybe i can you know uh, advance my career in a uh, you know hr role in the future and i want to you know uh, do you know human resources thing and blah blah we can talk about the roles that comes with hr brand management i uh, sorry uh, the hr bp role business partner role composition of benefits role lead um um lnd specialist role there are a number of roles that comes as an hr so we'll talk about that sure. so whenever you are in interview be it bm be it hr be it jo bhi course hai pgd ba i am calcutta and bangalore ka jo bhi course hai just be a set of have a set of answers why this course is important to you do not shun the other course if you are let, let's say you are you are being asked or you put in a fix that bm versus hr do not say ki bm galat hai aur bm kharab hai hr is like sahi hai talk about why would you prefer hr more than bm due to the your inclination your calling of hr you are calling about the subject maybe you have worked on a hr role previously talk about that and do not shun the other course because ultimately when you are in excel the first year is the same for all the difference between excel bm and excel hr is the first year is really uh, you know common for all second year onwards the hr hr guys have more uh, hr related core, uh, electives and core, core courses so there is a set there is a set of minimum credits that you need to take in the um, second year as an hr candidate so that is the only difference and also let's say you are you are, you want to understand the hr functions because hr in itself simply says you saying hr human resource but there are tons of verticals that comes under hr the compensation benefit 
rewards management uh hr generalist role talent management university lead campus lead engagement lead or engagement kind of roles there are tons of verticals in hr right so you can talk maybe talk about your calling or your interest in that we have overshoot it a so lot of time you. yeah so a, any so other question yeah ashwarya has one last question we'll take up that and we'll close yeah hi sir uh, so i just wanted to know that uh, do you have any idea like what is the weightage of the interview and other factors which act like in the overall selection process or is it like a black box nobody knows nobody knows final. nobody knows nobody yeah. knows that you can be rest assured that if you are driving the interview selection ho jana chahiye so if they are positive about your approach your thought process your attitude uh, ideally just be safe to assume that you have made a good impact now ab aa jayega ki baki log kaisa perform kiye baki log agar usse bhi acha kiye then you understand the percentile game it's a it's a bell curve right but uh, as long as you are driving the interview uh, just be assured that you are getting uh, decent impact on the panelist so there is no hard and fast uh, parameter ka ratio that this itna behavioral hoga itna technical hoga that's that's not uh, typically what excel looks at yeah but there is a checklist that they would tick if you have it it stick if you do not have it there's a cross and then they will figure out how many ticks and how many crosses are there and then they will compare within your uh, within your uh, shortlisted candidates does that make sense ashwarya yes yeah, sir thank you all right then guys um, we can close the session uh, i'm sure you would uh, you would gain some value from this session and many of you have interview day after tomorrow or maybe tomorrow so just all the best uh, do well and uh, chill chill mar lo theek hai baki to sab hota hi rahega and in case you want to connect to me uh, maybe with any question uh, i've just dropped in my linkedin address in the chat box you can probably uh, connect and send me a message if you have anything and i would reply as soon as possible right all the best guys uh, just do well and uh, don't worry do well thank you so much sir thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir, thank you, sir.